Hello and welcome to this webinar on searching in Intella and using regular expressions. Uh, my name is John Pearce and I'll be presenting this webinar today. So just a bit about my background. I've been involved with computer forensics and electronic discovery for approximately 13 years. I initially worked for the New Zealand Police as a digital forensic analyst. I then moved to the corporate sector and worked in forensic technology for Deloitte in New Zealand. So I've been a user of Intella since 2008 and have run many cases in Intella over this time. As previously mentioned in our other webinars, we aim to run two webinars per month, so keep an eye on the Vound forum to see what is coming up there. The webinars will go into more detail about features or workflows when using Intella, Connect or our new forensic tool uh, W4. We also have guest speakers who will provide insight into other topics as well. So before we get started, let's look at what we have coming up. As I mentioned, guest speakers, we do have one of those coming up February 18th. We have Damien Atto from Spider Forensics giving us a presentation on the power of data analytics in your email investigation. So if you're not done so already, you can register for this uh, webinar after the call. Uh, for today, we'll be looking at searching in Intella and getting a better understanding about regular expressions. For clarity, we have muted everyone's microphone. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat area and we'll cover them off at the end of the presentation. So searching in Intella and Connect may seem like a basic task to most users. But we do get a lot of calls and support or tickets and support where customers search for something. Uh, they know that what they're searching for is in the case because they've seen it there, but they don't get any responsive hits. So we'll have a look at some of those issues in this presentation. There are some limitations which we'll also cover. Um, but for those who don't know, there are actually two methods of searching in Intella and Connect. So firstly, on this slide here, the two images on the left, that is the sort of standard or normal keyword searching that you do in um, Intella. So the left picture is the uh, search box. You type in your keywords in there. And the second image is our keyword lists. Uh, where you can add a keyword list and just run a bunch of uh, keywords at, at one time. The second way of searching in Intella and Connect is using regular expressions. So we have a feature for that, and that's located in the content analysis. But we'll discuss these in more detail shortly. First, let's look at how Intella processes data so that we can actually search it. So when Intella or Connect processes a data source, the indexing process unpacks all parts for a specific item and indexes those items independently. So I'll give you an example on that. If we have, say, an email, and that email had an attachment, and the attachment, say, was a Word document, and in that Word document there were, you know, was an embedded image then Intella would index all three of those items. So your email, your Word document, and your embedded image. So any text and or metadata that is from those items um, when it's doing the processing will go into the index. And the advantage of the index is that normal keyword searching like we saw on the last slide with our typing in our keywords and using our keyword lists it's very, very fast. In fact, it's almost instant. But there are some disadvantages and limitations. So what I might do is I'll just open up Intella and we'll talk about those. So when text or words are added to the index, they are tokenized. And what do we mean by tokenized? Um, well, for example, if you had, say, an email address that was in an email and that was processed and added to the index, that complete email address will be added to the index as a whole token. And what that means is that if you try and search for that email address but you don't type in the exact email address, then you won't be able to find it. And I'll give you a little um, example here. 
So I have in this data set a email from our support email address. So support at Vound Software, uh, sorry, support at Vound-Software.com. And if I go and open that email, I can see that I have a hit for it there because I've typed in the complete email address. Um, in the headers, we can see we have some hits there as well. And we also have some hits in our raw data down the bottom there. So there's no issues with that. Um, that works absolutely fine. However, if I go in here and edit this and take off the .com and run a search, now I actually get no hits at all. And I know what some of you are thinking, hang on a minute, we saw it in there, we know it's in the case, how come it didn't find it? And it's because of this tokenization. And that's just the way the index works. So that's one thing to consider. And that's quite an important thing because what we find is people write into support and they're searching for things and they can't find them. Um, and it's because their search criteria is not right. Now there's uh, a very simple way to get around this and that is to use a multi-character wildcard. So in this case we could put our asterisk or our star character up there and what that means is find me everything that starts with support at Vown-Software and ends in anything else. So now we run the search, we get back to finding our hit in our case. And you can see here that the asterisk has allowed for the .com to be um, shown here in the search hit. So that's just one thing to be aware of. Um, words that are extracted from items during the indexing and put into the index are tokenized and they have to be searched exactly or you need to use these wildcards to, um, to find them. Another limitation I wanted to point out um, and if I just go into this keyword search quick reference, we have a area down here called special characters. Now I can't make this any bigger, I don't know if this is big enough for um, the viewer's screens, uh, but you can see this um, in your own cases or it's listed in the user manual as well. There are some special characters and in regards to special characters, when Indexing, most of these characters are typically filtered out and will never make it into the index. The rules and mechanics around that are sort of under the hood how until it works. Most of them are filtered out, some of them do make it, um, and it's sort of a little bit technical on what gets put in and what doesn't. But just be aware that most of them do get filtered out. So what that means for the user is if you are searching for something that has a special character, let's say a, a person's name that's hyphenated, so two names with a hyphen in the, in the middle, and you try and run that search up here in our search box, you might not get any results for it. Does that mean that we can't search for hyphenated names at all? Well, no. Let's just drop this down. And I'll just read out this first bit. So join the processing until it also stores a copy of all the text contained in documents and items. And it actually it's, it stores this not in the index, but it stores it into um, an, another database. So this information is what you see in the contents tab here. So this stuff here. And for example, we can see the word wrote here and we have a colon after it. So we could actually search and we could find the word wrote with a colon after it if we wanted to do it but you can't do that in the search box or using a keyword list. So how do we do it? Well, we use regular expressions and we do that, um, we find those in the content analysis facet. So let me just jump back into the case and we'll go down to our content analysis facet. And this is some preset regular expressions that we use uh, that well, until it gets shipped with, and the top three are actually have numbers on them. And that's because these get done automatically when you process a case. So common things like social security numbers, credit cards, and phone numbers are done by default. There are some other preset ones here which have no numbers, and that's because they're not done, but you can run them over your case if you want to do that. And the last one is one that I've created. So let's first jump in and have a look at what a regular expression is. 
So I go new. Let's just say I want to do a regular expression for email. What I do is I type in the name for it, and then I need to type in the regular expression itself. Now, unless you do regular expressions all the time, you're probably not going to really know what to type in here. And probably most of our customers wouldn't know what to type in here straight away anyway. So what we've done is we've developed this regular expression assistant to help us work through this. And this opens up this little wizard. I'll come back to the cheat sheet shortly, but uh, we have a library tab here. And if we're looking for a regular expression that will work with email addresses, we can just go down to this email address here. These are predefined ones that we've created. And when we click on it, we get the regular expression put at the top here. Now that might look a little bit cryptic to uh, some of the viewers. In our test text, we can see that it's actually found some email addresses here. So that's sort of how uh, the regular expression works. Now, if this looks sort of confusing, if you're interested on working out how this all works, under the cheat sheet, we have special characters and special operators in here. And those are what we use up here to find the email addresses down here. So regular expressions are used for really finding patterns. So we don't know what the email address actually is, but we know that it starts with something, it has an at symbol there, it has something else, then it has a dot and then something else. Or it might have um, a dot something else and then a dot something else. And that's what the regular expression does. It allows for the pattern of the email address. So this can be applied to invoice numbers, bank account numbers, you know, a whole lot of different things. Anyway, that's sort of a quick rundown on the regular expression. So back to our example. I can click on my one that I created earlier and go edit. And you can see here I've put a name in for my regular expression and I've put the regular expression there. This is a small one, but let's go back into our assistant and see how this works. I want to look for plus 64. And the reason why I look for that is because say I'm doing an investigation and I'm looking for a phone number that is based in New Zealand. So our country code here in New Zealand is plus 64. Now, if I look over here on the left-hand side, I can see that the plus character is a special character and it's used to find one or more occurrences of an of a item in a regular expression. So I can't actually just use the plus 64 by itself. In this case, I need to escape the plus character so that it's not actually a, um, a special character and it's a literal plus symbol that I want to find in the text. And we use that by using this escape character here. So let's just do a quick test. You can type in text here to make it easy. Um, and if I go back up to the top, you can see that I get a highlight here on plus 64 now. So I know my regular expression is working. Let's cancel that. And now we need to know, well, how do we actually run it? Because we don't run it up here in the search like normal keyword searches. So regular expressions or the content analysis is run over a, se a selection of items. So what you do is you get a selection of items and then you run it. And we'll step through that now. Let's go to location. I'm going to grab the source here and do a search. I'm going to select all the items in the search and go down to process and then go to content analysis. Now, if you do this for the very first time, you'll see that all these other preset ones here will be um, checked as well. So you can remove all the checks from those and just check the one that you want to run. In this case, I've already run my regular expression once, so I'm going to replace the existing facet values that have already been run and then run this again with new values. Okay, so once that's done, we go down the content analysis and we can see we have some hits under our regular expression search now. If I double click on that one there uh, and bring up one of these items and go to the contents tab, I can see that now I have a hit for plus 64. So that's how the regular expressions work. You'll never get that hit using the general 
or normal searching uh, methods up the top here running over the index. You'll get it when you run regular expressions over the content analysis feature. So again, there are some limitations that we should cover off as well. And I ran it on um, another file in the case and I didn't get any hits. Now we know this is a limitation and it's something we will improve in a future version. So in this particular case, this document here, I, I ran the plus 64 and I can see that it was hit over here, but I didn't get any hit highlighting. And the reason for that may be because this is all just one big string of text and it didn't sort of um, pick it up as, it picked it up as it's being in the document, but it didn't pick it up for highlighting it. And I think that's just a limitation that we have. Um, if it was by itself, like we saw in the last example, then you'll probably have no issues with it being highlighted. So just be aware that you might get respondent documents and when you open them, there might not be any hit highlighting in them. So you might be able to run over those respondent items, maybe a normal search for 64 and then um, pick it up and you'll find it in there. So some other limitations, content analysis searches like this regular expressions that we've just been looking at um, are a lot slower compared to searching over the index with your normal keywords. The index is very, very fast because that's what it's designed to do. Contents analysis will just go through and search the text. Now that's fine if you have you know, a few thousand items to look at or to search over. If you run content analysis over uh, the entire case, that would be very, very inefficient. Um, I'll give you an example. So you probably wouldn't want to do that anyway. Let's say you're looking for, um, it's a, a fraud investigation and you're looking for false invoices. So people have made these invoices, they've put their own bank account numbers in there, so they're getting paid into their own bank account. That's a sort of common type of fraud. Your data set that you want to run content analysis over would be documents in the case. So you wouldn't really want to run it over emails because, uh, you know, the email is not really the invoice. The invoice might be attached to an email and you'll catch that over the documents, but you wouldn't really want to run it over any of the other items in the case. So that's how you can filter down the data set that you need to search over and make the process a lot quicker. Uh, the second item here, we'll just jump back in the case and I'll show you this. So you can actually run regular expressions in the search box here. So I have one, here's one here. So it's a little bit formatted, a little bit different. It has this character at the end and has another character at the beginning. Uh, and that gives us um, some hits here. So let's just open that up and have a look. And down to our hit, there we get two Ds there. So it, um, that's what that the regular expression does there, and you can actually run it in the keyword search. So probably another thing that a lot of people don't actually know. The issue is that, remember, this is only going to search over the index, and that means that any special characters that you want to search for will not, probably will not be returned. So do your regular expression searches using content analysis is probably the, the best way to do it. All right, and that sort of brings us to the end. I don't see any questions in the chat area, so I'd like to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. And as I said, there are other webinars coming up, so go and uh, register for those, and we will see you on the next webinar. Thank you very much.